Hi everyone, this is Casey with Foundation Testing and Consulting. Today I'm going to be talking about wave equation analysis for piling, or WEEP analysis as it's commonly referred to. I'll provide an overview of this pile analysis method. I'll cover the type of output that you can expect. I'll also cover the limitations and benefits for this methodology. So what is wave equation analysis for a pile? It's a way to model the anticipated pile driving behavior prior to actual pile installation using a computer program that's made by Pile Dynamics. So why is it performed? We want to understand can the pile be driven to the required depths and capacity shown on the plans? Can it be driven without overstressing the pile? Can it be driven so that the blow counts aren't too high or too low? And also, what kind of pile driving hammer is going to be required to drive the pile to the plant tip elevations and capacities, again, without overstressing the pile? You know, I find that the greatest benefit of performing this analysis is to advise the contractor on the appropriate hammer selection well before they order the pile and uh, mobilize to the job site. We often can ferret out if there's issues, too, with the anticipated pile depths or their ability to achieve required capacity at anticipated plant tip elevation. Often the wave equation analysis is a precursor to performing dynamic pile testing later on in the field. When I perform the wave equation analysis, I start by reviewing the plan information, what the subsurface conditions are, what the pile section type, cross-sectional area is, what the links are, what the anticipated penetration depths are in the subsurface, and you know, I, just by doing this review to create the model that's gonna go into the computer program, I have a pretty good idea of what's likely to happen before I've even done the analysis. You know, to illustrate this point, one of my relatively new staff members went to a job where we were gonna do PDA testing. It was a last minute uh, project that was scheduled by the contractor because he'd forgotten that he had to do PDA testing. They were also supposed to have us perform pre-construction wave equation analysis, but they simply didn't notify us in time to do that. So we mobilized this to the site to perform the PDA testing. And again, this relatively new staffer looked at the plans and said, hey, I don't think we're gonna get capacity at required plan length. And uh, you know, this job had been designed by an engineer, it had gone through the owner who had issued the plans for, for bidding and for construction. And here's a guy with, you know, relatively new to the company and saying, hey, I don't think we're gonna make it. And uh, I reviewed the plans as well and I agreed with him. But again, we had to proceed with the PDA testing and it turned out exactly how we thought that at initial drive and the contractor only ordered the plan length of piling so he wasn't able to drive the pile deeper. But at initial drive, the capacity was far less than what was required. And we advised that they wait and uh, we do a restrike PDA test to see if there was enough time dependent capacity increase to meet the required capacity. And it turned out that there was but that created a, a delay on the project that could have been avoided, uh, first of all, by, by a better design, but, but certainly you know, we would have caught it had we been notified that a wave equation analysis was needed. And then we could have notified the contractor who could work with the owner to decide if uh, additional pile links or restrike testing or waiting periods would be needed and be compensated for it accordingly. So how is wave equation analysis performed? You know, obviously you need to know what your pile section is. Let's say it's a HP 12 by 53. We need to know the length. We need to know the penetration depth below the ground surface. We have to have a pretty good handle on what the subsurface conditions are, the types of soil, the consistency, the depth to groundwater, where a rock is located, if at all, and what the anticipated hammer selection is going to be. As I mentioned, the wave equation program is produced by Pile Dynamics, and the program contains a database of various hammer types, sizes, in terms of hammer ram size, maximum stroke, and rated energy. So what type of output are we looking for from the wave equation analysis? There's three basic modules for performing the analysis in the program. There's the bearing charts, the drivability charts, and the inspector's charts. So the bearing gives you a range of anticipated hammer ram strokes and pile sets or blow counts and stresses for a range of pile capacities. The drivability analysis, the drivability analysis 
considers the overall driving time, what the likely capacity will be from re resistance from side friction and in bearing at a given depth of pile penetration. So typically you'd run the analysis for the plan tip of pile elevation, figure out, well, are, am I likely to achieve capacity or not? And then you have the inspector's charts, which represent a relationship between hammer ram stroke and pile set for a constant capacity. In this case, it would be our required capacity. So for example, if we did a PDA test and determined that you need an eight foot stroke at least and no more than two inches and five blows for pile set to achieve a capacity of 400 kips at a given plan, at a given pile depth, later on they may have a case where they record a stroke of nine feet. And in that case, a, a higher stroke's likely to produce a higher set. So let's say they get a nine foot stroke and they get a two and a half inch pile set. Well, is that gonna work or not? So uh, the inspector's charts can be useful in that regard to incorporate a range of hammer ram strokes and pile sets. Now there's a special type of wave equation analysis called refined wave equation analysis. Some states like Kentucky require it. This is done after PDA testing is performed. So again, we run the wave equation analysis using a model of the pile, the hammer, and the subsurface conditions. And so there's a lot of variability. There's some simplifying assumptions that are made. But if we take the actual results from the signal matching analysis on unit resistance values and side friction and in bearing, what our actual uh, pile driving stresses were, what the hammer ram stroke and pile set was, uh, and what the capacity was, we could modify our wave equation model to match exactly what we got with our PDA test. And then if you generate an inspector's chart based on that refined model, it's gonna be far more accurate. Now there are jobs where only pile wave equation analysis is done. There's no subsequent PDA testing and we'll talk about that here in a bit. But often the wave equation analysis is performed prior to PDA testing. That's the way most specs are around my region. Also on jobs with really large piling or high capacity requirements, it's likely that a contractor is gonna need a much larger, more expensive hammer. They may need a bigger crane. And so sometimes the difference between two hammers can involve a significant cost difference. So, or it may involve the contractor having to rent a larger hammer that he doesn't own. And that may make them less competitive in pursuing the job. So oftentimes they'll reach out to us and ask us to perform the pre-construction wave equation analysis prior to their bidding. So what are some of the limitations? First of all, the wave equation analysis does not take the place of the static design. You know, there's cases where we run the wave equation analysis in a plan depth. We say that, hey, you're not gonna get capacity in all likelihood. And then the owner's reps come back and say, well, how much longer does the pile need to be? And, uh, you know, we can give them a rough idea, but that's not the purpose. I mean, there may be other things to consider like utilizing time dependent capacity increases or doing a PDA restrike. So again, it's not, the responsibility of the person performing the wave equation analysis to confirm the design. It's the model, the likely pile driving characteristics and hammer performance uh, in advance. And you know, the, any type of computer analysis is only as good as the quality and reliability of the input data. And in particular, the quality and reliability of the subsurface data. You know, there are cases where we don't have borings at every substructure across the bridge. and uh, you know, you have to account for potential variability across the job site. I've had jobs where, you know, let's say there was a boring performed on either end of the bent and one of the borings encountered a, a five foot layer of dense sand and on the other boring, it was all medium dense sand. Well, it doesn't make a lot of sense to run two separate models, one for the five foot layer and one for the boring without. It's probably better to use a simplifying model of the less favorable soil condition to get an uh, idea if you're more likely than not to achieve required capacity at plan depth. Also, you have to account for potential variability with the degree of, of weathering of say a shale bedrock contact if the pile is supposed to penetrate that. Uh, there are cases where I had a job where they had a boring at each end bent and one intermediate bent, but no boring at the other intermediate bent. So I used uh, a model where the two end bents were pretty similar and I modeled the subsurface conditions at the intermediate bent where no boring had been performed as being represented by the subsurface conditions encountered at the other intermediate bent. 
And the designer pointed out that, well, hey, this boring performed at bent number four is much closer to bent number three than it is to bent number two. So shouldn't you use the subsurface data from bent four for bent three? And I'm like, no, you're more likely to have similar subsurface conditions for the intermediate bents because of similar erosional and depositional history as opposed to what you have at the, at the indents or the abutments. So there's a lot of judgment that goes into generating the soil model. Now, wave equation analysis is one of the methodologies per AASHTO LRFD for pile verification. And uh, typically you're looking at a fee factor of 0.5 for wave equation verification versus 0.65 for PDA verification. So the higher the fee factor, the lower the required capacity you have to have. There are instances where an owner or a designer might think that, hey, let's save money and not run a PDA test, so we'll run wave equation and use a 0.5 fee factor, but that results in a larger pile section or longer pile. And those costs are far in excess of what it would have cost to run PDA testing and used a, a more favorable fee factor. Also, wave equation analysis isn't very good or reliable for the instance of short pile to hard rock. It's very hard to accurately monitor those stresses. And again, do you really want to give a field inspector a chart that says you've got to have this stroke and this blow count or pile set? By that time they, that they verify that, the pile may already be damaged. It's much better in those instances to use PDA verification so you can actually verify what the driving stresses are. And it gives us an opportunity to intervene with the contractor. I've got a job coming up this week where the piles installed in a pre-board hole into hard limestone rock and uh, you know we're supposed to run PDA, I'm going to have them shut the fuel off. And I've done that many times where we get the required capacity with the PDA with the fuel shut off. So it's just a dead blow, you know, just the blow from when they trip the, the ram and the hammer and it's a high enough energy impact that we mobilize enough capacity that meets the requirements. But could you imagine if PDA weren't performed in that scenario and there's an inspector saying, hey, or, or a contractor, we need to make sure we got this stroke and we need to hit it at least 10 times to figure out what our blow count and pile set is. By that time, it's probably too late. You're gonna damage the, the pile. I mean, in those scenarios, you're gonna have nearly double the pile stresses at the toe than you do at the head of the pile. So this video is a broad overview of the wave equation analysis, its benefits and uses. If you like this kind of content, please hit those like, subscribe and notification buttons. I'll be doing many other videos for specific topics in the area of deep foundation testing and design. So please stay tuned for future videos. Thanks very much.